The CNM Seeds Wheat School is brought to you by Bear Crop Science. I'm here today with Pat Lynch. Pat is an agronomist. Uh, Pat's been working with Ontario growers and producers for 37 years. That's Welcome right. today, Pat. Thank you. Okay, Pat, we're going to talk about something that's very near and dear to your heart, which is crop scouting. That's right. There are proper ways to do it, there are the wrong ways to do it, and there's some tips and, and protocols that you've put, you kind of put together that you, we're going to talk about today. Yeah, Sean, uh, I wrote the book or helped write the book on scouting winter wheat. You know, if a producer's going to scout a field, the scouting has got to be representative, it's got to be accurate, and it's got to be quantitative. Um, when I say representative, Sean, it's got to uh, represent the field. I got a picture here on the um, projector on my laptop of a, a field, um, maybe not quite typical, but it could be a, a representative field of winter wheat in the springtime. And when you take a look at the field, you've got to take uh, in your mind's eye, how am I going to, to scout this field or how am I going to walk it? And this arrow of a representative path shows how you could be scouting the field. And the road goes along here, so you definitely want to go through the headland to see what's going through the headland. There's some winter kill patches here. Now they may or may not be winter killed, and you have to get right out and take a look at it to see are they just slower coming along or are they dead. So you've got to walk through there, then you've got to go to the top of the knoll. And then, <clears throat> this, this is typical, bad things quite often happen on the top of the knoll. So you've got to go through the top of the knoll to see what's going there. And the other uh, truth of scouting is, if you did not see all of the field, then you did not scout it properly. So by the time you get to the top of the knoll, you can see to the back of the field to see if there's something else going on there that should be scouted. Then you come back to a representative area. So this would be a path through a winter field that would be representative. So this is the path that you would recommend? This would be the path that I recommend. Now, <clears throat> now so you've shown here to walk the absolute, basically a lot of the field from you, one side to the other. You have to, otherwise, if you're not doing this, you're not scouting the field. So we can see the black lines, there's the path that you're recommending. What is the path that most farmers uh, <laughs> scout well, the field? You know, Sean, I can say this a little bit tongue in cheek, but there's a little bit of truth to it. Some of it, it would be a drive by like this, you know, going by the road in the vehicle, probably slowing down to 15 to 20 kilometers an hour to take a good look at the field, mm -hmm. as opposed to doing 40 to 50, which would be a fast look. Uh, some of them might get out more intensive scouting just to check to see what these little dead spots were and they might even go into here but they wouldn't go the the full width of the field. You said accurate, okay? It has to be accurate. Now I, I can remember as a kid uh, growing up on the farm and I remember uh, my grandfather saying to me that you, when you go out to look at a field like you've you've shown here, you got to make sure you do it. You don't do it just early in the morning because the sun, you know, if you look into the sun or against the sun, it makes the field look different. Is that really scouting the field accurately, or what are some of the ways that you're suggesting? Okay, uh, he was absolutely correct, and uh, we teach that to the agronomy systems that if you're walking through a field and it looks pretty good look one way and then the other way because the light reflection does make the field look completely different and it's especially if you're in an area of the field and suddenly it doesn't look good then you take a look the other way to see is this a reality or is this a perception and and that is a, a little trick of scouting I didn't realize how many people knew it but that one's true but the other part of accuracy is when it comes to winter kill. And again, you know, I've talked to farmers and, and they're worried about winter kill. Well, how much winter kill is it? Well, um, you know, quite a bit. Well, how much is quite a bit? Well, you know, there's spots. So then to be accurate and quantitative, I'll put the two of them together. A slide here that shows winter kill. <clears throat> and on this winter kill, if you were just driving by, it would look pretty bad but you pace it off, and my standard and most farmer standard is three feet per pace. So this winter kill area, it's about six feet wide and 400 feet long. And that looks pretty bad, but that amounts to 2,400 square feet. So I would ask a grower, how many patches do you have like that? Well, if I put all the patches together, there might be five, 
and that it really looks bad. <clears throat> so if you had five of them, that's going to come up to maybe 15,000 square feet. And 15,000 square feet sounds like an awful lot, but there's 43,560 square feet in an acre. So when he puts all the winter kill patches together, there's a third of an acre. And again, this is the part of being accurate and quantitative. That now we know that there's 15,000 square feet of winter kill in that. And then you ask the grower, okay, how many acres in the field? Well, there's 60 or there's 100. Okay, so you've got a third of an acre dead in 100 acres. And then typically they'll say, <clears throat> well, put that way, that doesn't sound like very much. And the reality is it's not very much, but it looks bad. Uh, and then often I'll say to the grower, okay, tell me a little bit more about this field. How often do you see it? Well, I drive by it every day. So that's a point against it. And then I say, well, is it on the knoll or a low spot? Well, it's on a knoll. So there's another strike against it. When it's on a knoll, it's going to look worse. If you drive by it every day, it's just on your mind all the time. So if it was on the other side of the knoll and you couldn't see it, or a farm you never see it, you wouldn't even know it was there, and at harvest time, it wouldn't make any difference. So, so when someone's walking, or when, when you're going through this and, and scouting the field, is there any sort of uh, uh, record keeping or yes. stuff like that you should, you should be taking? Uh, another good question, Sean. And with scouting, I again say, if you go through the bother of doing a representative area of the field, but don't take notes, all you've done is gone for a nice walk. And, and when you're scouting, you have to take these notes that are accurate and quantitative and representative and write them down. Now, if you are good at this, you will take those notes and, and start making a map or record of this farm so that you can look back at it in two or three years. You know, is this the same winter kill that I had three years ago and six years ago? And hey, there's something more going on here. Maybe it needs drainage, maybe it's a broken tile. Or if there's weeds in a certain area and you mark them on, now you start developing. So your, your records have got to be all these things, and they've also got to be written down. Um, when we look at your list of the three things that make a good crop scouter, which is crop representative, accurate, and quantitative, um, to me it seems that representative would almost be kind of the most important, because you can be really accurate and really quantitative, but if your sample's not representative, uh, you, you're making maybe some wrong decisions. Do you agree or disagree with that? Sean, I, I enjoy your question, but no, you're wrong. They, they, are, they are all important. And, and I will give you my standard answer. You know, accurate means how many. And I have fun with the uh, summer students with the scouts for years because I'll ask them, how many? A lot. I say, well, how many is a lot? Well, it's a lot. So, you know, is a hundred a lot? Is a thousand a lot? Like to the good Lord, a million years is not very many. To me, a million years is a long time. So you have to be accurate in terms of being quantitative. So one per square foot. And when I ask the university students and they start, is that very much? Well, well maybe. Okay, one per 10 square feet. Is that a lot? No, 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 that's a lot. Okay, so you got one ragweed per 10 square feet. Now just visualize going to harvest. You still have one per 10 square feet. That's 43,560 ragweeds in, in, in an acre. Is that a lot? Oh yeah, that's a lot of weeds. So it's gotta be accurate and it's gotta be quantitative. So it, it, it can't be, you know, one to four and it can't be 20% of the field. It's gotta be accurate and it's gotta be quantitative and it's gotta be representative. So the three are equally important. Perfect, well thank you very much, Pat. We really enjoyed uh, the discussion today. Okay.